we're gonna wait, keep waiting for him. You know, he. Uh, I think he'll keep checking it out and they'll keep looking at him. He obviously hasn't been cleared, but he came out here and did a lot more, you know, running wise earlier than I thought he was going to do. So we'll just keep keep playing it by ear and seeing what happens. Who goes in for him if uh, he doesn't play? Well, we're get, you know it takes about five guys to replace Jordan Poyer. So yeah, at corner, of course, Sean Martin will be there. Not playing isn't in Jordan's vocabulary, so it's kind of Yeah, yeah, it is. It's it's a little bit strange to have to consider this, but uh, we'll have to just, you know, I'm not going to rule him out yet. Without him, though, does that hamper your nickel and dime things that you've been doing? Oh, you know what? You can't have those packages without guys that are backing those up. So, you know, uh, it, it, we'll still be able to do whatever we would normally do. If he didn't play, who would be the punt returner? Well, I think... Uh, you know, we'll we'll see if if Marcus is the number one backup to that deal. So, but I want to talk to him a little bit since he's missed the week two, and then Tron Ward and Rashad Reynolds are also ready to go. Is there a part of you at this point in the season that thinks about resting Jordan? Oh, for sure, I'm not going to put him at risk. You know, it's got to be a deal where he, the doctor, the trainer, everybody feels great about it, and if they don't, then we'll we'll wait. Give him a give him a week to. Get ready to go. How did Storm and Marcus look to you? Too? Good. You know, I think Storm did more than I thought he was going to do, and that that's good. He he appeared to be right on top of what what we did all week, and then uh, Marcus, of course, is is fine. He's felt good all week. You know, it's just the protocol that you have to go through keeps you from uh, uh, practicing. Talk about how, pardon me, how um, Mulaney stepped up Saturday and his progression at wide receiver. Well, he stepped up Saturday and he's progressed as a wide receiver. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> but it's not a surprise to you. No, I, I, I was going to elaborate <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, no, Richard, you know, anybody that's been watching us practice has noticed Richard Mullaney. You know, he's, uh, he's, not, he's not a secret to us at all. So um, he's made a ton of plays in practice. And, and so, you know, it's, it's, uh, we don't have many receivers as far as a lot of, a lot of of uh, depth, mm -hmm. but the depth that we have are good players, and uh, Richard's one of them. And he went in and did what uh, he's capable of doing. Envious mustache. Huh? Do you envy his mustache? <laughs> no, I'm trying to wonder what what he's after here. You know, <laughs> I don't. I don't. Up for Nolan begins. Uh, as soon as we Sutton expected to be back. Uh, how does he affect the game? Oh, he's a great player. You know, they have a lot of speed on defense, a lot of different stuff going, and uh, of course, he's he's a, a big part of uh, all that talent that they have. Do you feel like the success you guys had against Star maybe kind of gives you more confidence? In the game? Well, I we we don't assume much. You know, uh, we know we've got to block good people, and it's it's uh, this this team leads the league in defense, and they do, and they are there for a reason. You know, and they've. They've uh, been extremely uh, high in the stats about tackles for losses, sacks, and uh, so it's it's a it's a pretty imposing looking group when you're watching them on on tape. And a lot of different guys with sacks. I mean, they bring pressure. From yeah, the yeah, they have they have all different kinds of blitzes, and uh, their their defense is predicated on pressure. What do you think about their running attack? It seems like they got a few guys back there can kind of hurt you. Yeah, they're very, very productive, very versatile. I think they're good. You know, uh, they've got good talent to run the football, different guys, and then they, of course, their quarterback is very athletic too, and he hurts people running the ball. This season, and you've done a great job shutting down one guy. Is it different when they have like three guys who they can change in and out? Well, you know, they they provide you a lot of problems. You know, it's uh, it's going to be uh, unique to uh, the what Arizona State does as to how we have to defend them, but it's but it's kind of a common thread with the spread teams and that you're going to have to make a lot of plays in space you know so when you play a team like this it's just, just a given you got to make open field tackles you got to be great on assignments your eyes have got to be right uh, you're you're playing a variety of looks and you're playing against a very fast-paced team you feel like you guys responded pretty well this week after that loss yeah I thought practices were great Brandon I thought that uh, I, I don't think that uh, we really you know, uh, after the disappointment of going through the weekend and Sunday, I thought Monday was pretty typical, really. This group practiced as well. Coach, some um, uh, coaches who coached both in the NFL and in college have been asked this week, um, 
if you took the national champion in college football and put them up against the worst NFL team, what might this happen <laughs> in that game? What do you think as one who's coached in both levels? Well, I might have been coaching in that one with the, with the worst team one year. Uh, no, I don't think, you know, I, I think you're talking, when, when you see an NFL football team, you, you know, the, those guys, there's a lot of, lot of athletes on every team. And, uh, you know, I, who knows execution-wise how it would come out, but uh, you're talking about older talent that's, you know, good. So, I, uh, I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Hey,